that is our goat right there. 470.1, not too bad. So we've rested to the next morning and we've got a five-star bighorn. He is a 462. 460 is five stars, so barely made it. Having seen that, now we have to at least go and check. If you remember back to, I think last week's video was it, where we shot the five star elk, there were in that herd, I think three other four stars. And assuming that when one animal ages, maybe everything on the map does, I don't know how that works. There is a chance that maybe one of those elk has reached five star as well. And We've got two in this video, maybe we can make it three. I'm not always 100% certain where they are. I've seen them drink at this lake and this lake, and we're a little bit early, but hopefully we can get eyes on them relatively quickly. I believe these are the elk that we're after. That guy, that is a five star. That was obvious from that far away. I don't know, the other two still look decent? Wait a minute. I think, did that? Two of them are five stars, and that one's a four star. How are we going to handle this? The one in the back is way wider, so that's probably the one that we'll try to go for first, but I don't know, like tracking down anything can be really tough. Maybe the biggest advantage that we have right now is if they flee, and they flee kind of in that direction, we may well see kind of where they go, but I I had a feeling the genetics here were good. I wasn't sure if we'd have quite a result like this. So that one's kind of going broadside. Maybe we can make that shot and kind of try to pay attention to where they go. I mean, they're all packed in there so much right now. I think that is, I'm not sure. That might be the four star. Kind of the problem with them all being so solid. That's a five for sure. That's the four, so that, that is another five star back there. And maybe if he kind of continues broadside, we can get him through there. It's looking like that's not gonna be how it plays out, but that's a shot I think we can make. It's about 150 out. And before he kind of changes the direction he's going, we're gonna try to punch that kind of right through the shoulder. That is pink blood, but it's more than just a matter of watching where he goes down. I'm not even sure which one he is or where he got to. But we also need to pay attention to, I think, that particular elk. I think that's the other five star. Unless that's the one that we shot, but I believe the one we shot is a little bit wider. I really don't know where he went. I know we got him good. And it does kind of appear as if they're maybe going to slow down up there on the mountain. So, the question kind of becomes, do we try to track down the other or do we just go for the shot? I think that's the one that we need. Let's try to look and confirm. We shot somewhere right down in there. I mean, that is, I'm pretty sure that's pink blood. Let's take the 100 cents off and maybe look a little bit closer. That looks pink to me. So maybe he went down really quickly. That is a thing that'll happen with elk sometimes. They'll kind of go down so fast you don't even see it. I'm not 100% sure which is which, so let's go down here. Let's see if we can maybe at least figure out where he went. And it's not going to take too much until we're within range to spot and figure out which one is which still up there. And actually, our first one did not go almost anywhere. There's the marker. He looks gigantic. He may be better than the last. But that can allow us to focus our efforts on spotting the other five star. I know he's either that one or maybe the one down lower. We got to cover about 50 meters to be able to actually get spotting info. And I'm not sure. Maybe we spooked an elk that was way closer there's a mountain goat running through there too they seem to be kind of taken off that is going to make our life a little more difficult because i know up towards the top was the one that we were after they still don't appear like they're going to go way farther but that might make it a little more challenging i think we'll leave a track marker there these ones are slowing down so my guess would be the others are kind of just on the other side of the hill Let's at least go and grab the one that we did get down. That, it just looks giant. It looks perfect and is really kind of like gray in color. I think he is probably up towards the end of his life cycle, but really quickly. Might even do like a standing kind of trophy shot here. Just for the sake of trying to be somewhat quick, because 
we have another elk to go and find. I guess that will be good enough. Maybe, I don't know, down like this might be better. I would prefer if the antler wasn't kind of in the ground, but I'm trying to zoom into where most of that gets cropped out anyway. So, let's see for our second ever five star elk from the same herd, by the way. That was right into the left lung, kind of through the shoulder, so maybe not the best shot placement. We did say the back of the shoulder, which would have helped us. He is 91%. Maybe he won't be as big as the last. He looks bigger to me, but according to this, he is a 470. I would have guessed way bigger than that. Let's taxidermy that, and let's see if we can figure out what's going on for the other elk. So, our track marker is up there at the top of the hill. That is not in the direction, really, of the campsite. I was considering fast traveling and doing it that way. Because going up over the hill is not going to work. If they're standing right there, we're going to have to go around. I'm pretty disappointed that I just cannot seem to find those elk again. And unfortunately, the timing of this recording is just going to kind of have to change the way we approach this. I always record these videos on Friday before the stream, and unfortunately it is time to go and stream. So I guess we'll have to come back to try to find this elk later. And I wish we just could have found them, you know, without having to exit the game and reopen it, because I imagine that's going to put them back kind of on their regular schedule. I just don't know where they've gotten to, and I don't have the time at this point to go and try to figure that out. So I guess we'll kind of see what happens, but I'm assuming maybe back where we initially encountered them is going to be the way to go. I am beyond confused. We are looking at maybe the same herd of elk, maybe not. What isn't here for certain is a five-star bull, and they know we're here 250 yards away. With him broadside like that, this may be the opportunity to take a shot, but what I don't understand is where the four stars are. I saw some three stars, no sign of any fours, but we'll go ahead and get that guy through the lungs, I think. He looks like he's hurting pretty bad, but the blood does not look ideal. We'll keep a real close eye on where he's going to get to, but to me it looks like he's going to be going down, so I think we're all good. I'm almost tempted to try to hit him. I mean, I don't see pink blood. And he is kind of still going. I mean, is he about to go down? I think he is, so I guess we're going to be alright. But like I said, no four stars. So there's really only two options here. Either this is the same herd and some of those elk have declined, or this is another herd with another five star bull. Now we're over here, and again, we had to basically pause and, and go and stream on Twitch. So, having come back, I was really considering spooking them in the mountains on purpose, just to kind of get back to where we initially were, and because I'm not certain this is the same herd, I decided not to do that. Now, we gotta make sure we don't fall and die. I think when you have to fast travel, animals might still despawn, so we'll take this kind of carefully, but I am really not sure if we just killed the bull that we were after or not. Not the best spot I've ever seen for a photo, but we can probably make do here even though he's laying in the brush. Again, I know I mentioned this in the last video and I've pretty much committed by now to making this a two-part video or a two-part hunt at least. I just, if we could move the animal eventually for these photos, it could really, really make for a nice kind of trophy shot. But for our third five-star elk ever, second one on this hunt, we double lung and got the artery there at 247 yards. The fact that he ran as far as he did really is interesting. We've seen elk go down a lot more quickly than that. 98.53%. That's a big elk. That guy was a 471, so could he have gotten bigger? Likely he could have, that would be my guess. But it's so tough to know, and we're certainly at a point where we're not going to be trying to let five stars age further and potentially end up dying of old age, so we'll tax that one too. And now this gets really interesting. Is there another? There may well be. I don't understand how there would be three stars. The only thing that has happened is we've ended the session and started a new one? Could that cause aging or declining? Maybe. And I guess we'll just go over this other lake and try to find out. Now, if there is another five star there, I feel like it's only fair to like intentionally spook them to get back to where we were. And just to kind of explain myself, I felt like that would have been more fair to the situation if we 
did spook them and, you know, have to find them in the mountains that way rather than kind of knowing where they would be, because that is what happened, but I'm just not certain this was even the same elk, and if it's not, we kind of have to take that shot and go and find the right ones. We may be at a distance, but it is pretty clear that was not the right five-star elk, which means there were, at a minimum, three on the map at one time between these two lakes. And also, that means what I said earlier, that the two five-stars, our first two five-stars came out of the same herd is incorrect. Now, the one that we just shot is out of the same herd as our first, and potentially, if we can make this work, our fourth could be in the same herd as our second. I think it's that one down there? Or is that a four star? The five star was kinda narrow and that's him there, so I do think it's only fair if we just spook them and have to kinda find them as it was. I know that might sound a little bit odd to do, but for the way that I'm looking at this, I just think that it's not right to just kind of take advantage of the fact that you can end the game and get them back in their zone. So, what I'm going to do instead is actually look at the potential for a multi-mount. And there's one with a cow that I really quite like. That four star, by the way, is going to be a five star as well. And a good one, if I had to guess. He looks bigger than the five star beside him. But for now, I think we're going to try to take a mature cow and try to have that from the multi-mount and then worry about taking the five star if we can find them again wherever they flee to in the mountains. So counterintuitive as it may be, I think we're going to go ahead and try to get maybe this cow elk here. The angle is, well, wasn't too great, but right in there, I think we can get it. And what we're going to do is try to watch them run off. To me, just the entire premise of this game and the reason it has been so much fun is the fact that it is very realistic and I just don't like even if it is unintentionally, kind of taking advantage of a mechanic where ending the game and starting a fresh one can have the animals kind of back in their zone. So we will at least try to kind of stock them in the mountains wherever they end up, looking like it's going to be somewhere up in there, so not exactly where they went last time, but at least it is away from the lake and not in a predictable location. They're kind of slowing up right over in there, so we'll try to leave a marker. Looks like a lot of the bulls are starting to kind of trot. Still a little bit sprinting, but somewhere over in there is going to be the guest. So I think we got that cow. I couldn't actually see the blood, but I'm guessing it didn't go too far. Gotta say, not the easiest blood trilling I've ever done, especially when we really didn't get to watch where the animal went. And it really makes it more difficult when it's not exactly distinguishable from the others. It's one thing when there's you know, the, the biggest bull or buck in a herd that you can kind of watch as they run off. But I think we're kind of onto it now. Gotta assume she's not too far away. And of course, we do have to take it slow because we're still within range where they could hear us kind of walking around over in here looking for her, but gotta be somewhere right here. And maybe 25 meters from that last spot, just kind of laying in some brush. Our cow is down right there, a little far back. Left lung is the organ that actually was the lethal hit, but got some stomach intestines and somehow not liver in that shot. But nothing really important to look at here other than the fact that the cow elk sit really low down since you have to have a kind of lower set to see all the antlers for the bulls. But we're going to taxidermy that for a multi-mount, and that is where at least the hope for rares could really play in down the line. Maybe having a rare cow in a multi-mount could be pretty neat, but if the bulls are still over there where we last saw them, we're within range and the wind is not great, so this will probably be a slow stock. Well, that wasn't particularly effective. Already have them running again. And this just is why I wanted to kind of spook them on purpose. I just feel like this is kind of what we would have gotten ourselves into. That was our five star. I could see that kind of narrow rack. And they are heading over the hill, so maybe if they go that way, we can kind of work ourselves into a bit better position, at least vantage-wise. We'll see where they go. That could not have worked any better. That is our herd of elk right there. And our five-star at about 190 yards is just trotting down their broadside. So I think this is our opportunity as he's standing there. Try to slot that right into the lungs. He is crushed. The amount of blood and his reaction, he will not be going very far. I, ju I just can't believe 
what has happened up here in the mountains in what really initially was going to be a hunt kind of staying away from the mountains. He's still going further than I thought he was going to go, but looks like he just went down right over there. And as we kind of go over here to recover him, I've really been wondering, like, ha has my approach been incorrect in the way that we've been trying to go about getting five stars? Because it's taken a very long time to really come up with anything. And I think it was just a matter of getting to the point where we put in enough time, enough days pass to where some of these animals age. And I really do feel a lot better going into hunting season in real life at our odds of just coming out of Wade Hunter for like a two hour hunt and maybe getting a five star or two or three or I guess five as the entire day ended up being. I just think, you know, I was unsure about how well we could do starting in October, but I'm feeling a whole heck of a lot better now with our fourth five star elk down from this area. Now, as we continue to take some of these guys, I think the genetics in this area won't be as good and maybe these herds won't be as good, but at least we have an idea of how to manage it. So double lung on that guy. Second lung was hit a little below the required energy, but still actually would have been a fatal shot regardless. 190 yards, 88% for that guy, so likely to be our smallest one. I am curious though, 460 on the dot, no way. So that is an absolute basically minimum five star. And with his genetics, that's probably about as good as he could have gotten. Kind of unlike the last one where there's a question as to whether or not that could have been any better. I don't think he was ever getting above 460. Maybe he had one more kind of year to go where he could have gotten a tiny bit bigger, but that is just really solid luck that he was just able to eclipse that mark. So I think because this is going to end up being a two-part video, we may kind of go and look for some other stuff up here in the mountains. It's only 1 p.m. I don't know where to go. I mean, we could try to get to some of the unexplored areas. Most of the mountains themselves, other than what you can't really get to isn't explored. This little area, though, we've not been up there. Let's try that. And I guess it's just an elk hunting day because we've got another herd out here. That lead one is a one-star young. I can't tell what some of these other kind of better ones are. I'm thinking three stars maybe at best. That is a two-star mature. So we could take that one or the one in the back is also a two-star mature. I think we'll go for that. I'm a little worried just kind of based on where he's standing. I don't know if our shot is going to like impact the rocks instead, but we'll try. And it looked like it got him good. He was a little bit stuck, so... Even if that didn't hit lungs, I think we could get him again, but I'm pretty confident it did, and I think we may have saved ourselves some tracking by shooting that one. I now see what happened. He was kind of like up against this bank. I'm worried that if we go in there, we won't be able to get back out, but I guess we could probably go that way. So he was at quite the angle, but we managed to double lung him even despite shooting over the rocks at 301 yards. 41% as a mature, certainly one worth taking out, and... As it turns out, we can't just shoot nothing but five stars for an entire video. Still trying to work on those genetics, and I did think of that. You know, going into October, getting close to October, it's kind of unfortunate we just had this, like, big wave of five stars that maybe could have been better spread out, uh, you know, across hunting season, but I'm certainly not going to pass up the opportunities. And like I said with the, I think it was the second one, that was a 470 with a 98%, he could have maybe aged a little bit further and maybe gotten bigger. But we are nowhere near a point where we're letting five stars try to grow. So finally, something other than an elk today. And it is a group of bighorn up here on the side of this mountain. And there is one kind of decent one in there. And even that is only a two star mature. So I think we'll try to take him out. Again, trying to work on some of our overall herd genetics when we can. And before he takes one more step behind that tree, we want to take him out again. Any kind of like trees, bushes, anything like that. The hitboxes can be a little bit bigger than they appear. So trying to take the shots well away from stuff like that can at least help to kind of alleviate any problems that you could run into there. I think that is our sheep. I just saw that blood, so gotta be. And I think he must have gone down right back in there. And I just realized as well, there's a couple of elk out there. May well be from the herd that we saw earlier. A one-star mature, one-star adult, kind of a decent one in there, but all of these 
appear to be ones that maybe could be taken out. So, I don't know what that is, but maybe we can get him. He's kind of decent-ish, but looks fairly old. I'm just going to assume that none of these genetics are great. So, we'll hit him too. Looks like another pretty solid hit. And if we can, once again, we'll try to keep eyes on him and place a track marker where he ends up. I've got to say, that stumbling downhill animation looked really, really good. Kind of looking like... Maybe there did he go down? I'm not sure that marker's at the right distance, but I think we'll be able to find him. As for our bighorn, down right where we last saw him, so that worked out pretty well. I'm assuming pretty low to be a two-star mature looking like that. 53% actually is better than I thought, but even still he had a ways to go. He's got a better curl than it looked like. From the front though, I don't think it's quite as impressive as it appears here, so definitely one to take out. And now we'll go and try to figure out where the elk is, if it's by our marker or not. And we're not even going to need the marker. We can see where he's laying from here. Let's actually clear everything and just place the one. So that worked out well having the bighorn here. And so for what is going to be our last kill of this hunt, we really have no idea what this guy was, just that none of the genetics looked all that good. 310 yards, double lung, and I think we got the artery that goes from the spine down to the heart. Looks like we did. He was 53% mature, so another one that did indeed need taken out, but I think this is going to be real fun, trying to figure out what is going to go where in the Trophy Lodge with all the new additions now. What a ridiculous hunt that turned into, and I don't even know what we're going to do here in terms of what goes where. I know I want to do the multi-mount with the bull and cow elk. I was looking through options, I think just yesterday, and I thought it would be pretty cool to do that mount, so it's actually listed incorrectly. I think it was this one. We could do this as well, but I'm kind of thinking like it almost looks like this time on this elk clips through. I believe if we do it looking out like this, we should be okay. Let's take a look at how this works. I don't know. I'd hate to spend the money and for it to not work out, but between the two options, we could do the two elk fighting, and I just kind of wanted to do something a little bit different. Like I've not seen these ones actually done. I'm going to hope it's going to fit, I guess we'll find out very soon. But we have the cow, obviously, which is going to cost 3500 And the bull, I don't know which we're going to choose of the three. I think the second one is a lot lower set. These two are very, very similar. I guess we'll just go with the second one, I don't know what score-wise it would have been. Does that fit? It does not. I was a little worried about that. And I'm not sure there's anything we can really do about it. Maybe for now we'll leave it. I'd really love if we could just kind of flip it around. Because I think that would make the difference. We'd be able to actually have it fit on that platform. I don't think there's a way to do that. Best I can tell that is not something we can do. So either we'll end up doing the two elk fighting eventually. Or we can just, you know, hope for an update that even would just allow us to swap the positions of the bull and the cow. We wouldn't even have to flip the entire platform. Just putting the bull on the left would solve that. Now, as for the other two, because we have two full-body bulls mounted, I'd like to do a couple on the wall. I just don't know exactly where. I'm trying to make sure there's going to be room for them. I think maybe this could work. I really wanted to do, they have, they called it like a roaring pose, but I think bugling is kind of what they're going for. So maybe one like this, I wanted to see what that looks like, and far cheaper at 350 credits than the 3500 for a full body mount, but I think that works. I kind of like what that starts to set up over here, and I don't know what's like possible on these. Probably kind of smaller stuff, deer, mountain goat, things of that general size. I think that we could make that work. We have that four star bighorn. I mean, what the heck, let's throw that up there too, since we took him down from before and only cost 250. Just kind of adds a little bit to the back of this room. I think that's going to look really nice when we can make those additions. And then the other spot I'm thinking, right here I think would be really nice for an elk. Here it won't fit. I'm pretty sure that plaque could have an elk on it, but it's just not going to work. So there are two options here. We could either do kind of looking downward or a little more up. So I say we go with that. Another 320. I wonder what the difference is and why that one's a little bit cheaper. But another 320 to tax that. And now we have a much more complete kind of upstairs to our trophy lodge. That is just insane that we had that kind of luck on elk. And in all the craziness, 
I haven't even gotten to mention yet, we only ended up with three instead of two because of the Twitch stream and the fact that we had to stop and go back and, and try to find them again. So that is just insane, but four five-star elk up here, getting confused with the numbers trying to remember what is what, and I really like it. I wish we could flip this around, it does kind of bug me that that kind of clips through, but we can figure that out going forward. And I will say, full disclosure, Friday's stream was meant to be a Way the Hunter mission stream. Ended up switching to Call of the Wild because I didn't want to go through time and have the other 5 star that we hadn't found, let alone the other 5 star that we didn't know existed, end up dying of old age. We definitely now, sitting on 4600 credits, are going to need to do some more missions. So I think that's going to be what we do tomorrow on stream. Maybe we can get our credits looking a little bit better, but what an insane hunt. I just, I never could have predicted that was what was going to happen when we headed out today. And I feel really, really good about our odds going forward. I'm just filling this lodge with 5 stars and I can't wait to see what it looks like. I love the design of the Nez Perce Valley Lodge. I think they did such a good job. And as much as I like it, I'm looking forward a lot now to going out to Transylvania and seeing if maybe we can't match those results, but just kind of seeing what we can achieve, knowing that we are on the right path, it may just take a little bit of time to get those five stars. So that is going to do it for this two-part hunt out here on Nesperce Valley. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.